hi, we're making bone broth in the Instapot. It only takes a few minutes and very little ingredients. Let me put your face up. So why make bone broth for your dog? Dry, dehydrated, and freeze-dried foods are very dehydrating. Bone broth adds moisture to your dog's food. Bone broth is also believed to have many healing properties. It is supposed to help with relieve joint pain, improve digestion, strengthen bone, boost the immune system, heal the gut, and it's supposed to be good for the hair, nails, and skin. Hi, today we're making bone broth using chicken paws. This makes a great topper for your dog food. You'll need two and a half a pound of chicken paws that have been cleaned. They should look flesh toned. You will need a stalk of celery, a carrot, a handful of parsley, water to fill your pressure cooker, and a tablespoon of vinegar. That's it. So into your pressure cooker, you're gonna put the two and a half pounds of chicken feet or chicken paws. Two and a half pounds of chicken paws. You're gonna put a stalk of celery. And you can cut this up, break this up, however you wanna do it. Throw it into your pot. You'll want one carrot. You break that up or you can chop it into pieces, however you prefer. And you'll wanna put a handful of parsley in there. Then you'll want to fill your pot with water up to the maximum fill line. You don't want to go over that. You fill your instant pot with water. All right, so you fill your instant pot up to or just below the max fill line. And you add your one tablespoon of vinegar. And some people use apple cider vinegar, but that's not necessary. Apple cider vinegar is best used uncooked. Once you cook it, it loses its all, all of its good bacteria, so you might as well just use distilled white vinegar if you're going to cook. Okay, once you get all your ingredients in the pot, you're going to put the lid on, and you're going to set it for soup, stew, whatever your setting is for your pot, soup, stew, for two hours. You want this to cook for two hours, and then you will want it to slowly release on its own. Just leave it be and let it cool. Okay, so we've got our um, pressure cooker set for meat stew, two hours, and we're gonna hit start. Although Finn likes to hang around and wait for his soup, there's really no reason for you to watch the pot. That's the great thing about an electric pressure cooker. You can set the timer and go on about your business. So after your bone broth has cooked for two hours, you're gonna to need to let it sit about 30 minutes before you can open the pot safely. There's really no rush to open the pot. You're gonna to have to let it cool down a little bit before you can package it for storage. As you're stirring your bone broth, your chicken paws should be falling apart. If not, you may wanna cook them a little longer or remember the next time you cook it to add a little bit more time. All pressure cookers cook a little bit differently and you may need to add a little more time. You'll want to use some type of strainer to get all the bones out of your pot. You definitely don't want your dog to eat any cooked bones of any kind. If you want to separate the vegetables out of your pot, it's perfectly good for your pet to eat the carrot, the celery, and uh, parsley in the pot. I like to use ice cube trays to freeze my bone broth so I can take out single servings for my dog, but you can package this up any way you would like. You'll want to remove the chicken feet and discard them. You do not want to feed them to your dog. If your dog is on a low-fat diet, you can leave the bone broth in the pot, put it in the refrigerator overnight, and then skim off the fat in the morning.
You can package your bone broth in ice cube trays, little doggy molds, plastic containers, or mason jars. Whatever works for you and your lifestyle. Placing your mold or your containers on a baking sheet will help you get it to the freezer without spilling it. Your bone broth will keep in the refrigerator for three to five days or you can keep it in the freezer for about six months. In the beginning of the video I was using a fine mesh strainer and my bone broth was perfectly clear. Here I'm scooping it with a spoon and you can see that I'm getting some parsley and particles in my broth. If that bothers you, stay with the fine mesh strainer. I really don't mind and Finn doesn't mind if he has vegetables in his broth. Once my molds have frozen, I like to pop them out and put them in a plastic bag because they take up less space and I can use the molds for other things. You can place the frozen bone broth on top of the kibble and let it thaw out at room temperature or you can leave it frozen for a treat on a hot day or you can pop it in the microwave and thaw it out and pour it over the kibble. Let's see if Finn okay. likes bone broth. I think he likes it and he's not going to share with that cat. Speaking of cats, if you have cats, they love this bone broth too and it's great to rehydrate their food as well. Chicken feet, chicken paws, whatever you call them, they're good for your dog, whether raw or made into a bone broth, they are excellent. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye.